Catholic sisters have been embraced by the Macon community in an ecumenical and interfaith way since the 1800s, when the Sisters of Mercy began what would become St. Joseph's School, but in reality, it was the beginning of the public school system here in Macon. Later with Mount Sales, the Sisters of Mercy, through their school system, were embraced by all of Macon, as were St. Peter Claver's Sisters of the Most Blessed Sacrament, and today, the Daughters of Charity, who do such wonderful ministries here in Macon, from St. Peter Claver's School, to ministry to our Catholic Hispanic population, to the Family Advancement Ministry, to our pro-life ministry, the Colby Center, and finally, to DePaul USA's Daybreak ministry for the homeless. In fact, this year has been designated by Pope Francis as the year of religious life. And I am glad that we can honor not only Sister Elizabeth, but all the sisters who have ministered in a powerful way and have had an awesome impact on all of making, not just the Catholics that are here, but all of Macon. And we need more sisters. And I hope that you are praying for more vocations to the religious life so that the legacy of the Ministry of Catholic Sisters can continue here in Macon and throughout the world. In honoring our daughter of charity, Sister Elizabeth, we honor all Catholic sisters and the ministries they have led that have brought the saving ministry of Jesus Christ to so many people not just Catholics, but to all people. For us as Catholics, faith and good works are necessary for our own personal salvation, because this translates into a faith that reaches out beyond the confines of fierce individualism, or the confines of the church, or a particular church building. It reaches out to all who are in need of salvation, not only in the world to come, but also in this world during our earthly pilgrimage. As a daughter of charity, Sister Elizabeth personifies what it means to be a Catholic and to integrate faith and good works into her life, not just for her own benefit, but for the benefit of others, especially the poor. The city of Macon read in the Macon Telegraph on Holy Thursday, which is the Thursday before Easter Sunday, that Sister Elizabeth was moving to Little Rock to establish the same kind of wonderful and loving ministry as Daybreak does here. Two years prior to that, Sister Elizabeth was named by the Macon Telegraph as Person of the Year. But the headline on Holy Thursday's Macon Telegraph stated the following, Beloved nun to leave Macon. And then Scotty Nelson is quoted as saying, Sister Elizabeth has brought love and nurturing and kindness and gentleness and a fierce spirit about her that brings all of us together and brings this place together in which we call daybreak. And a video at the Macon Telegraph's website of her own announcement to the homeless one can hear the homeless shouting out to Sister Elizabeth, No, don't go. We love you. Stay. And I suspect that many of us this afternoon want to say the same thing to Sister Elizabeth. Stay, Sister. We don't want to give you a send-off. Stay. That's an order. <laughs> Catholic sisters and the daughters of charity in particular personify the example of the sheep in the gospel reading, the ones who are destined for salvation. They personify seeing Jesus in the needy and attending to his needs, whether he be homeless, a stranger from another land, hungry, thirsty, in prison, or sick. I have to say to you as a, a priest, but more so as a Catholic, I'm proud to see a Catholic sister embraced so lovingly here in Macon, not only by the Catholics, but all religions and those
those of no religions. In fact, those of no religions are called nuns. Did you know that? N O N E S, rather than N U S. But uh, she's been embraced by everyone atheists and agnostics. So, in the person of a, a, a Catholic sister, Jesus Christ is universally accepted in the most implicit way possible. And when I say Jesus, I mean our risen Lord, who remains with us today in the Holy Spirit and through the ministries of the church, like what Saint, what the Paul USA does here in Macon through daybreak, a truly interfaith outreach to the homeless. So tonight we give thanks to God through his son Jesus for the ministries he has given to the church to help the poor and those who live on the margins of society, the periphery as Pope Francis would describe it. This is a joyful celebration, although it is tinged with a bit of grief. This seems to be a little bit like a funeral, doesn't it? But the deceased, Sister Elizabeth, is alive. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Or is it a resurrection appearance after her death, similar to the Lord's resurrection? I don't know. But it appears that I'm not the only one who feels like Sister Elizabeth's departure to Little Rock is like a death for Macon. Even the rabbi in town, Rabbi Larry Schlesinger of Temple Beth Israel, wanted to canonize Sister Elizabeth as a Catholic saint when he spoke at the dedication of Daybreak's newest venture, where? And he asked if a Jewish rabbi could canonize a Catholic sister, and I thought to myself, be my guest. <laughs> but we have a higher authority with us tonight, Bishop uh, Bolin, so a good rabbi, if he appears, can ask the bishop if it would be kosher for him to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, canonize uh, Sister Elizabeth. But if this were a funeral mass for Sister Elizabeth, which to some of us it seems like it is, we would be praying for her immortal soul to speedily exit purgatory. Yet she has chosen to leave Macon, which is heaven, and go to Little Rock, Arkansas, which in reality is purgatory. It is, really. <laughs> You're leaving heaven for purgatory, Sister Elizabeth. Maybe we do need to pray for your immortal soul at this Mass after all. As Sister Elizabeth and many of my parishioners know of me, I don't like to canonize Catholics as saints during their funeral Mass. The Church prefers that we simply commend them to God's mercy and allow Him to do the canonizing on His own. But this isn't a funeral mass, nor is it a canonization ceremony. Only the Pope can canonize. But we do thank you, Sister, for your years of service here in Macon, for taking the directorship of Family Advancement Ministry so many years ago, and then later for helping to found Daybreak and our pro-life ministry, the Colby Center. But most of all, we thank you not just for what you do, but for who you are. A woman created in the image and likeness of God, who by God's grace has found her identity as a Christian in the Catholic Church and as a daughter of charity. Helping the poor and those who cannot defend or provide for themselves, the most innocent among us, the unborn, as well as guarding life after birth until natural death is part of the Church's seamless garment that we call being pro-life. We thank you for that witness. We thank you for your loving witness to this reality of the Church's life and mission here in Macon, and we will all miss you. Sister Elizabeth wanted her farewell to be within the context of a Catholic Mass, what we are celebrating this evening because of who she is and what she does, flows from her Catholicism and from being a daughter of charity. As we continue this Holy Mass and enter into the one sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, who suffered and died for our salvation, and as we worthily receive his body and blood, 
May we all know that we are being strengthened by the very grace of God so that when we are dismissed from this Mass, we will all go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives.